Hello and welcome back to the Serverless Hub. I wish you a very happy new year. I am your host Nisal Vikramage. You can follow me on LinkedIn and GitHub. In this video, we will be discussing about Azure Functions monitoring. Before we get into implementation details, let's understand why we should monitor. Imagine your function app in production and thousands of users are using the application. While you are off work, users start complaining of sudden crashes, sluggish behavior, or worse, application is unavailable altogether. By the time user complaints reach you, the business might have lost revenue and trust. It's great to have clean code and fancy CI CD setup, but ultimately, the application you deploy needs to perform well in production. So it's important to make sure application is healthy in the production. User experience depends on multiple components. Application health, infrastructure health, and resource utilization are key factors that contribute to the application health. Azure Functions integrate well with Azure Monitor and Application Insights to provide array of utilities to report and monitor application health. In this video, we will see how to enable Application Insights for a function app. Then we will see application logs in a function app log stream. Afterwards, we will query and filter logs to extract vital information from the logs. Then we will see how to monitor metric values. And finally, we will set up alerts so that we don't need to keep looking for particular query results or metric. Now that we have understood why we need monitoring and what needs to be monitored, let's jump in and see how we can implement monitoring. For this demo, I will be using a simple function app that I created in a previous video series, building web APIs with Azure Functions. If you are not familiar with Azure Functions, I highly recommend that you follow the series. Let's log into the Azure portal and open the function app. Click on Application Insights tab. Then click on Turn on Application Insights. You can change the name of the Log Analytics workspace if you choose to do so. I will leave it as it is. Finally, click on Apply to create the Application Insights instance. Once it's created, go to Logstreams tab on the function app. Logstream UI will take few seconds to connect to the stream. Once connected, trigger few functions in the app. Application logs should appear in the screen. Logs can be filtered by the log level. If you experience that logs are not appearing over on log streams, it may be due to a misconfiguration in your application's host JSON. Make sure log types you want to push to application insights are included in the configuration. Log level settings and aggregator settings should be correct as well. We can even see the function specific log streams. For that, we need to navigate into the function and the monitor tab. Logstreams may not be very useful since it doesn't offer querying capability. For that, we need to use logs tab of the function app. Let's go to the logs tab. It will show a prompt with pre-written set of queries for us to use. For now, let's ignore it and go in. First, let's get familiar with the UI. Towards our left, we can see the list of tables. Logs from different sources are written into these tables. For this video, we will only focus on three tables. Request table, exception table and traces table. In the middle area, we can type in our queries and run them. Log queries are written in a query language called Custo Query Language. We will not dive into details of this language in this video. I'll leave the URL for the specification of the language if you are interested to learn more. First, let's see the logs on the traces table. Application logs will be written to this table. Let's write a query. Queries are very simple if you know the language well.
Now let's filter out the logs from last hour. Let's remove unnecessary fields from the result. Let's filter logs by the function name. Finally, let's order the logs by the timestamp. Next, we will query the request table. This table records summary of each request. As we can see, records include details such as request status, result code, function name, time taken to process the request. We can even get a summary of result codes for each function. Let's update the query for that. Another cool feature is we can visualize the summary query results with a single click with charts. Finally, let's look at the exceptions table. This table records errors occurred while handling requests. Let's filter for function, delete to do items, and remove unnecessary fields from the result. Now that we have a brief idea on how to monitor application logs, let's move on to matrix. Click on matrix tab. Basically, matrix are measurements of aspect of the application over time. For example, CPU or memory utilization, number of executions and function failure rate are few. Matrix has a scope which can be a service instance or a logical group like resource groups. Since there can be variety of matrix, they are grouped into matrix namespaces. Matrix are often monitored on graphs. Let's see how function execution count matrix has behaved. We can see the number of function executed over time. Let's check out another matrix, function execution unit. 
This matrix is a combination of execution time and memory. We can visualize two matrix in two charts simultaneously if needed. But if we move away from matrix tab and come back, the charts will disappear. If we need to see them again and again, we can pin them to the dashboard. We will pin them for now and later see how we can see them on the dashboard. Unfortunately, function apps on Linux consumption plans only have these two matrix. But we can see more matrix in application insights. Let's go into application insights and matrix. As you can see, there are two namespaces since there are a variety of matrix. Let's choose log base. There are more granular matrix. Let's check out a few. Monitoring matrix helps us make sure application is working as expected, but it's not convenient to keep monitoring all required matrix all the time. That's when we can use alerts. Alerts will let us configure threshold values for vital matrix and summarizes matrix violating threshold. If required, we can configure alert channels to get emails, SMSs when matrix goes above threshold. For this video, we will only see how to configure an alert and see it fire on the alert home page. Click on create and then on alert rule. For the signal, we will choose exception. Let's leave the dimension dropdown as it is and set the threshold value. Operators and aggregation type let us select the correct projection. Let's leave the aggregation frequency and evaluation frequency as it is. Click on done. Skip actions as we are not covering actions in this video. Type in the alert name. Choose the severity level. I will skip the tag section, but feel free to add tags as it is a good practice. Finally, create the alert. I am now triggering few exceptions in the application. Let's give some time for the alert to fire. When we refresh, we can see the alert being fired. Let's go into the alert. Now we can see the details about the threshold violation. Before we wrap up this video, I want to talk to you about few UIs in the application insights. These will be very handy to understand certain aspects of the application. First, let's go to the failures tab. This tab summarizes errors occurred in the application. It shows fail request count over time, top error result code, top exception types, and top dependency failures. Table in the bottom gives us a breakdown of function-wise failures. Next step is performance step. This step summarizes performance measurements of the application. Most valuable information being the average time taken by each function. Third step I found interesting is live matrix. It shows incoming request rate, request failure rate, and a log stream of the function name.
Next step I want to show is application map. This step showcases components of the application, including other Azure services function app communicates with. The important piece of information that I see here is the breakdown of request duration. This will be very useful if you are trying to address a performance issue in the application. Finally, I want to show the application dashboard, which gathers all the details from different areas we discussed in this video. For that, we can go to the overview page and click on application dashboard. We can choose our private dashboard from the dashboard's dropdown. This board includes the charts that we pinned when we were exploring matrix. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send an email to the serverlesshub at gmail.com. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe.